we have wonderful people working at our, our company in the sense we have visualization artists, we have uh, fine artists, we have filmmakers, we have mathematicians, we have uh, uh, researchers, uh, we have you know basically high-level programmers. And what we try to do is is collect huge amounts of data. We have obviously the most advanced technologies. We dedicate 150 terabytes to every project we do. We basically have you know, two supercomputers at every programmer's desk. And in essence, once we collect these huge amounts of data for each and every project, we then tell stories from them. And that's what we really love to do, is story tell. Because it's always what we say is, as much as we love our data, it's story that gives a soul to the data. And so let me give you an example of that. Here's a, a story on just you know, chronic kidney disease, trying to put it into perspective. Here's a wonderful man who has a 10,000 acre farm in Indiana who has stage five chronic kidney disease and really wants to live to see his grandchildren grow older. And so here is his kidney really decaying very, very quickly, so he's not producing any erythropoietin, so the blood, red blood cell production is very low. Fortunately, his son-in-law actually is, has a very robust um, kidney and he's a match. So basically, he's dedicated his kidney to uh, his father-in-law. Now, one of the things that we wanted to do is actually take a look at the inside of the kidney. We designed all these new technologies, worked with you know, genetically uh, engineered mice with these unbelievable glomeruli. These are the glomeruli which are actually producing or, or cleansing. There are millions of them inside your kidney and cleansing the systems of the body constantly. And what happens with diabetes and hypertension is it just destroys them. And a lot of people say to us, are you doing this for the professional community or are you doing this for the consumer? And the beauty of visualization is it speaks to everyone. And, but fundamentally, smoking, drinking, obesity, these are the kinds of things that just wear the body down. And I'm gonna keep on coming back to the word chronic. Now, we then did a very high level virtual surgery, um, uh, working with the physician, the surgeon, to actually show how the you know, surgery can be performed. And what happens, they leave the kidneys inside the body and they produce about 10 or 15% of the filtration later. And this one actually ends up in what they call a false pelvis in the back. And in essence, the, the, the surgery was successful. And so after this entire project, we had produced a tremendous amount of technology and imagery to come up with this lovely end image where he's walking down his fields again with his three kidneys and he with his one. Now, in one level you're gonna say, isn't it wonderful that we have technology and you have this, this uh, pharmaceutical industry that basically produces these uh, immunorepressors that basically allows them to live in dialysis and all these other kinds of things. But I must admit, I went through a different kind of epiphany at the end of this. I was sitting here saying, you know, it's amazing that we spend all of our energy, storytelling, technology, the technology of the medical industry, and no one ever in the entire, you know, several months of doing the project and the research ever talked about prevention. Everything was basically dialysis and what's going to have to happen, you know, uh, post these projects. And so we said, there's got to be something better than this because basically the things that actually destroyed those beautiful glomeruli that you saw were basically hypertension type 2 diabetes, you know, two diseases that are really quite preventable in most cases. So we did and said, we've got to change the paradigm. We have to stop and actually start to use storytelling from a perspective at the beginning of the spectrum and use our technologies to see what we can do at the beginning of the spectrum. So for the last many years, what we've done is started building tools so that people can actually turn themselves into a story of what's going on inside their body. So what happens here? Let's just take a, a pathway of people are now going to the doctor, you've been told you have type 2 diabetes, or you're pre-diabetic. You have no idea what's going to happen. You know, it's your insulin dependent, what's A1C, what's my glucose, how am I going to get these drugs, what does it all mean? First thing you do is you go back and research. Well, the problem is that the entire pathway is, is siloed and splintered. You're going to go research over here, you're going to get to a specialist there, you're going to go over there, it's, you're going to get contradictory information. So we said, we have to create an ecosystem that basically guides you from the moment you have been diagnosed or even before, that you can diagnose yourself in many cases as you get your information back. So here what we did is we set up a library that you can actually start immediately. Uh, and, and, these, and this piece of information will allow you to say, okay, I wanna take a look at diabetes. You can add this to your personal library and this will become a part of your educational system. As your records are imported, in, you will have every aspect of what's going on inside your body. But what's going to happen here 
is that we are going to contextualize every aspect of that. So if one of the problem lists is breast cancer, we're going to give you all the information on breast cancer you can imagine. All the videos that are in our library are going to come from, from how obesity to what happens to the biopsies to, to uh, how you're going to be diagnosed. There's going to be all the images on it that are going to teach you. And so you're never, you're going to contextualize every aspect of what's going on inside your body. These are the kinds of things that we feel, even medications, nothing is going to be left to chance. You're going to get videos that explain every medication you have. One of the biggest problems you have, lab reports. It's like hieroglyphics. People come back and say, OK, what, you know, what is it? You know, A1C, my god, what is that? What we did is we built the, the biggest biomarker library that is totally interactive, that tells you everything about that biomarker. And then once you get your lab reports back, it'll flag you automatically and tell you a story. So what is A1C? Sound? It shows your average blood glucose level during the past two to three months. It does this by looking at the hemoglobin protein in your red blood cells and measuring the percentage of glucose attached to it, seen here in purple. The normal range for an A1C test is 4 to 5.9%. 6% or over indicates diabetes. Little stories, and this gets back to what people are talking about big data. It's not about big data. It's about big data being broken down to little stories that explain to you little things that are going on inside your body that adds up to, this, to these conditions. So what we do is break them down so that you can understand them. Why do I have to have the heme? What is it? What, what is the test for? What are the demographics? We even allow to play with the molecule if you want. It's all, they're all done in 3D. Uh, little stories about what the blood, red blood cells. Stories, again, that allow you to sort of elegantly sort of be unintimidated by the process. This is the most important thing. The moment you can actually take control, that empowerment is huge. So even to imaging, what we've done is that we've designed, because we are multidimensional programmers, what we've done is we've actually written the program so you can actually import all of your 3D data directly into your program, and you can crowdsource if you want a second opinion. So here is a, a brain. It will play on any. This is a very old, you know, basically uh, MacBook Air, a little 13-incher, and it's playing data that used to play only on a huge supercomputer. You can upload your data. The information is, uh, is what we do is we built different kind of algorithms because the person has had a contrast element here. So this actually spots it up a little bit more. You can see a little bit more clearly. You can annotate the information uh, if I want to look at it in a little bit more traditional format. Uh, and so this is the kind of stuff where basically you now control, you can even speak to other people about it. You can have chats about your own data, or you, know, you can take a picture of it. You can annotate the data. And the annotation is a, a very important part of this entire process, which I'll explain in just a moment. And then you basically can just save the image out. And so we don't want any part of your body to be a mystery. We want everything that's going on inside you to be explained, a story about everything that's flagged. So we're actually translating what they call the ICD-9 and the ICD-10 into a program that has a story connected with every one of them. Uh, even in some of the technologies we have in imaging, we are designing new interfaces so that you can actually see, for example, virtual colonoscopy where you can actually see the data as you're actually traveling through. Normally, you get this just as a simple CT data set, and you're traveling through now, and even a buffoon can actually spot where the, you know, the, 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 the polyps are. It's extraordinary as to what we can extrapolate and share with people. Of course, in the office, we have these very advanced technologies where you can actually put you know, uh, uh, these 3D sensors where you're actually immersed into the environment, which one of the guys who actually was looking at his own data said it gave him a whole new perspective of having his head up his ass. But, <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is that what we wanted to do is simply give you, at every moment in time, the opportunity to understand yourself. OK, so that's a personal health record. We have also an electronic medical record for the physician that actually matches this and is contextualized. What happens next? Well, next, I've got to do something about this. I've got to have a program. So we're building programs that basically we have one of the largest nutrition libraries in the world. And so say you have a meal planner, you want to drag it. And we are building 16 programs. We've already put a number of people through our programs and reversed their biomarkers by up to three decades. What we did is basically change their sleep, change their stress, change their foods, 
in essence, one of the things that we have found is that there are actually hundreds of thousands of people out there who can already begin to help you. They're great dietitians, great nutritionists, great physical trainers, and physicians. They have no tools. So what we did is we built a tool set so that in case you can find someone who you really like, wants to go with you in our four-month program as a vitality guide, they can actually pull information from our libraries and drag it into you to, t to your storyline to tell you what's going on. So we have even gone to the extent of actually scanning all the fruits and vegetables and foods that you eat so that we can actually deconstruct them. So that here you see an orange in 3D from a CT scanner. We want to explain why this food, how it helps to build this part of your body. These are the kinds of things where every aspect is going to be explained to you. We don't want to leave anything to chance. What is it about the foods that you need to eat? What is it about osteoporosis? Where is it in calcium? What is it these kinds of things? These beautiful trabeculae inside this bone that are being eroded because there's not enough calcium input. These are the kinds of things that if you see them, you get them. When you get them, you can act on them. But coming back to the concept of chronic, we so abuse our body. This is the typical stomach, one liter stomach. Here it is at two liters. You can see the vagus nerves, which are the 10th cranial nerves coming down. They innervate the stomach and they have a conversation constantly with your, with your brain saying, I'm full. We so abuse our body with high amounts of sugars and all these other kinds of things and just basically abusing it that there's a natural process to the growth of these things. When you're born, it's the size of a chickpea. You know, three to six days later, it's the size of a grape. One week to six months later, it's the size you know, of a strawberry, then a grapefruit, an adult, this is the size. We are throwing the conversation that our bodies have naturally to bring us back to a proper homeostasis, a proper balance. And what we're trying to do is never have you go to a program and say, why do I have to do that? We want you to understand the reason that we're asking you to do that is because it is, this is how it's going to benefit you. Like for example, exercise. If your trainer says, I want you to exercise, I want you to do aerobic exercise, this is one of the benefits. BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. It's called miracle growth for the brain. It's one of the only molecules that actually creates uh, new neurons in synaptogenesis and optimizes synaptogenesis. It's principally created from aerobic exercise. So, a good reason to exercise. Uh, on the other hand, when we ask you to do anaerobic exercise, what's the value here? Well, here's a cross-section of a fat muscle. Here's the nucleus, and here are the mitochondria. These are the furnaces that are actually burning all the fuel in your body. Here you can see the mitochondria inside a cross-section of a muscle cell. A thousand X more mitochondria in, I mean, mitochondria in a muscle cell than in a fat cell. So basically, your basal metabolic rate while you're sleeping is just burning this stuff off at a very rapid rate. People talk about aging. I'll give you an example here. Science has proven that exercise slows down the aging process by benefiting the body at the cellular level. Every cell is made up of DNA strands with little caps at the end of each strand called telomeres. Telomeres protect our genetic data and make it possible for cells to divide. But each time a cell divides, the telomeres are shortened. When telomeres become too short, the cell can no longer divide and it dies. Studies show exercise maintains the length of telomeres, allowing cells to live longer, creating an anti-aging effect in the body. So we have plans, we have these, these programs for uh, every imaginable part. We have content and we're constantly building content to explain you to you. These are the kinds of things. Now, what's happening is over a period of time, within the next two or three years, you're going to have one of these that's gonna be here, that's gonna be the equivalent of an ICU unit. And in essence, it's gonna be pumping data into your program all the time. I don't want to think about big data, I want to think about all those incremental pieces of data that come in that are being explained to you, that help you to understand what your condition is. The last part of this ecosystem is community. Basically, what we're doing is creating a digital diary so that people can actually walk visually by, by allowing them to upload their visual experiences and just drag and drop them. Or, if they want, they can actually go into one of the largest visual libraries in the world, the Visual MDs libraries. They can choose anything they want and drag and drop it. Now, one of the things about the annotation part is a very interesting part when you drag and drop it, because what we want them to do after a series of months is to actually post a, one of their programs where 
what, is, what, was it, what was the program like? How was it over the four months? And the interesting part of this is medical information can be very intimidating. But one of the things we learned actually from art by looking at the data period and taking a look at Duchamp's painting of Mona Lisa, the simple mustache on the Mona Lisa made it his. So the idea of the demystification, something as simple as annotation allows these very large databases of what can be intimidating data to be your story by just giving people that kind of power. So here he starts off just tired, alcohol my friend Peter, Peter's vice in mine, my liver before, heart as a hockey puck, you know, my vessels clogged with plaque, um, meals, Mark's four month transformation inspired me, this stuff is pretty good, you know, rewired my brain, and in essence, four months later. So all we are trying to do is create an ecosystem for you to understand what's going on inside your body, make proper decisions for yourself and for the people that you love. Thank you.